What's up guys, Saxon the Good Time Gaming. Today I'm gonna to bring you guys a review of the recently released John Wick Heist Pack. We'll start by taking a look at the gun, the Contractor 308. We will move into talking about the heist. We'll talk about the melee weapon for just a brief moment and then take a look at the mask and we will wrap this thing up and I will give you guys my final verdict. Let's get this thing started. When it comes to heist, there are two heists that have been added. Brooklyn 1010, which is a loud only heist, and the Yacht Heist, which is a stealth only heist, but it doesn't actually list that in the description of the heist in game. It says stealth is an option, and it also doesn't say that on the uh, description page on Steam. So kind of weird there. Starting with Brooklyn 10, uh, basically what's going on is here is that Sharon, the uh, guy played by Lance Hendrickson in the John Wick movie, has been captured by some thugs, being held hostage. We're going to go in there and rescue him and get him out. Um, the heist is pretty interesting. You start in like some um, buildings kind of overlooking the site where he's being held at. You have to cover him, shoot the cops, shoot the thugs, and then move into a couple different other little buildings to kind of keep the whole process going. Um, it's pretty fun, I guess I would say. It's not like a super spectacular heist by any means. I wouldn't say it's special. I do kind of like how you have to kind of provide cover for Sharon as he moves from building to building. I wish he was killable. The fact that Sharon can't be killed and that the thugs and you know police are trying to shoot him really don't matter uh, kind of takes away a sense of urgency. I'm guessing they probably did that because it's just probably easier to you know not let him die. But it would have been nice if there was maybe like some function where like if you didn't help him within a certain amount of time, he would be killed, which would then fail the heist for you. It would give kind of a sense of urgency. It would force you to kind of play more aggressively and to kind of keep an eye on Sharon rather than you know. If you can't get all the cops, okay, just like turtle in a corner, kill everything, and then stick your head out there and finish off the cops. You know, like, there's no sense of urgency, which I think is kind of a missed opportunity for Brooklyn 1010. Once you do save Sharon, you will go down a zip line to the uh, basement of the kind of hotel, apartment building, whatever it is that you're in. You'll go out on the street, kind of run around real quick, and then you will basically just like sit in this one little area here that you guys can see for maybe one and a half to two minutes or so while the escape shows up. There's two variations. There's one variation where the escape will just kind of like ram through the cop cars and just boom, it's right there in the middle. The second variation, you will actually have to manually move the cop cars out of the way, at which point that will trigger the escape. All in all, you're looking at about a 10 to 15 minute heist. Uh, not very long. I also wouldn't say not very difficult. Um, I found this one to be pretty easy on one down. We got it our first try playing with two randoms, although the two randoms are actually pretty uh, competent players. I mean, it's not like they're bad or anything. Uh, but overall, a very easy heist, I would say. Next up is the Yacht Heist. Um, I'll be honest, this one was a little bit intimidating at first until I kind of learned where everything is. So starting out this heist, you have to go and hack a laptop, which can be in a couple different places. Doing that, you will see a QR code, which is kind of next to it. And then if you actually look at the laptop screen, which I didn't know this whenever I shot the video for this, it will tell you what to look for. So it'll say like, you know, to look for bookshelf or cigar cases or like room numbers. It'll tell you where to go to find the correct uh, bags. So the whole shtick here is that um, McKendrick is running for re-election and he has had his political friends bring large bundles of cash onto his yacht and then leave it in different places. Now why he didn't just like have them meet him in like, I don't know, the fucking desert? or, I don't know, a McDonald's is beyond me. Like, why you would bring these huge stacks of cash in these very obvious bags onto a yacht and then, like, stash them in a fucking, like, drink cooler or in a fridge for this guy to, like, come and collect later on, it just seems kind of ridiculous to me. Like, you not, like, wire that shit offshore or something like that to a tax haven? Like, I, I don't understand. It's kind of a weird setup. I think it would have been more interesting if, like, maybe you were stealing something to, like, kind of, um... I don't know, use against it, like to blackmail him or something like that. Or you were like setting up some sort of surveillance thing where you kind of keep an eye on McKendrick and see what is going on. I don't know, it's not his yacht, it's some guy named Ethan Powell, I don't know who he is. But I don't know, it would have been nice to have some more, more of a tie-in with that. Rather than like, you know, okay, we're just going to like grab all this money. The heist isn't really that difficult. Um, there's no officers that police the entire um, area, they're just kind of like confined to certain areas. There's no cameras. There's lots of civvies, but a lot of them can just be kind of like shot through, um, shot like kind of launched over the side of the railing. 
they can be bagged and thrown out the windows pretty easily. They're not really something to worry too much about. I would say that once you kind of get the hang of the layout and where everything is, this is an incredibly easy heist to say, um, stealth. Very easy. There's also an achievement for doing this one in six minutes. So that should give you guys kind of a idea of the length of this heist. I would have liked to have seen a loud version of this heist. It would have given it a little bit more replayability and kind of given the pack a little more um, to offer us rather than, you know, basically 18 minutes of content. You know, 20 minutes maybe. 20 minutes maybe once you've kind of done this a little bit. All right, guys, so I want to take a minute here to compare this gun against the three other sniper rifles that are pretty close to it. Um, for the purpose of argument here, I'm going to count the M308 as a sniper rifle, since you generally use it in single shot, not auto fire. So we have here the Contract 308, and we see our stats. It's worth noting that I do not have any skills at all. You guys can see I have 120 skill points. The plus 8 damage is coming from my perk deck being fully maxed out, the 5% you get from that. So there are no other skills adding damage or accuracy or anything like that to this. So for our base stats, we have a magazine size of 20, 40 spare ammo, a rate of fire of 150, 160 damage, 76 accuracy, 4 stability, which is pretty pretty damn low, um, 16 concealment, and we're going to go with a 4.4 second reload. Comparing this to the M308, you can see that the M308 is better in every single category, uh, with the exception being the magazine, which the magazine is only a 10 on the M308, the damage is the same at 168, it has less concealment at 8 and it has a point, uh, 10 second uh, faster or longer reload. But in terms of accuracy, stability, threat, rate of fire, and total ammo, the M308 comes out well ahead of the Contractor 308. The next one to compare to is the Levensauger 308. You guys can see here, the Levensauger has a um, smaller magazine at 10, slower rate of fire at 120, but it has higher accuracy and stability, which are at 92 and 20 respectively, but a significantly longer reload time, a 7.6 reload time on the Levin Saga 308. So pretty uh, pretty rough stats there, pretty bad competition if you ask me. And last but not least we have the Desert Fox. Um, the only reason I compare the Desert Fox is because it has, the, it's in the same kind of category as the Contractor where it's supposed to be like a concealable sniper rifle. So for that reason I'm choosing to compare the Desert Fox to this gun. You see the Desert Fox has a magazine of 5, 30 ammo, 60 rate of fire, it does more damage at 315, same accuracy at 76, stability at 12, 19 concealment, 28 threat, and a reload time of 4.9 seconds, so just slightly longer than the Contractor 308. So now what we're going to do guys is we're going to go ahead and mod up. Um, as far as these skills I'm going to take, I'm going to go ahead and get into Silent Killer and take that extra 15% damage. I'm not going to take any of the skills that add to accuracy or stability, just going for um, a Silent Killer so we get the extra damage on there to kind of compare where everything's at. Alright guys, so going for straight damage with silenced barrels and no stat boosts on anything, we now have the Contractor 308 at 213.3 damage. Compare that to the M308, which has 214.6, the Eleven Sauger 308, which comes in at 210.6, so 3 uh, damage behind basically, and then the Desert Fox, which comes in at 399.6. So the Contractor is a pretty decent middle of the road competitor against the other guns. Um, but you know, let's see how this thing can conceal, shall we? Alright, so it is time now to compare our concealments. It is worth noting that I went ahead and aced um, Optical Illusions to get that one bonus concealment. And I'd also get a uh, two point reduction to the um, silencers. We see here the Contractor has 23 concealment, which is pretty damn nice. We have the M308 at 12. We have the Love and Sauger 308 at 20. And we have the Desert Fox at 21. So the Contractor is two points better than the previous uh, winner here as far as the concealable snipers go. So if you're looking for a concealable sniper rifle, this is the gun to bring. Right here. The Contractor 308. There's also a new melee weapon called the Hook. Um, it's it's a hook. It's like a meat hook thing. Kind of reminds me of Dead by Daylight. Uh, nothing really special. It's just a melee weapon. We have four new masks. We have Lady Liberty. Birds of Prey, Captain, and Sailor, as well as four new materials, four new patterns, and of course, your standard variety of 12 new achievements. So overall, what do I think about this heist? Honestly, it's kind of underwhelming, I think. Um, 
The fact that they got Lance Hendrickson and DeVoy Sharone is pretty cool. I will give them a million props for that. Um, but that's really kind of the only good thing here. The sniper rifle is obviously very, very good if you guys didn't kind of catch that from my uh, analysis of it. It's a good it's a good gun. It's got you know good damage. It's very concealable. You can easily run a free concealment um, build with this. Um, it picks up ammo very well. Damage is good. Accuracy, stability. I feel like the, the gun is very good. It's a very good gun. Um, it kind of eclipses 11 Sauger 308. So the 11 Sauger 308 is kind of like an obsolete gun if you have the Contractor 308. And I would also argue that the Desert Fox is also obsolete by the Contractor, at least in terms of using a concealable sniper because this one's about I think I said two points better so it's better more concealable than the desert fox so what does the desert fox have if not it's concealment you know the damage but you can just use something else even if you want concealment you go with the contractor 308 if you want damage then you wouldn't want to go with the desert fox use something else like the m308 or one of the other uh, snipers that are available so really this pack kind of eclipses two of the sniper rifles that we've had for a long time. Uh, not the Desert Fox, obviously, it's a very new one. But Desert Fox and Levin Saga are basically obsoleted by the Contractor 308, in my opinion. There's also a very strong competitor for the M308, um, giving you guys kind of an extra option for that. The heists themselves, like I said, guys, are just a little bit short. Um, they're fun. They're not anywhere near what I would say, like, my favorites. Um, they're just, they're just, they're okay. They're okay, that's really kind of all I can say about it. They're just okay. Uh, nothing special, nothing worth spending money on right now, I don't think. My overall takeaway of this um, heist pack is to just save your money. You know, if you want to buy something, I would buy one of the older packs like into the Wolf Pack or Sydney. Buy something like that has a little bit more value, a little bit more um, oomph to it, you know. This pack just is not it I don't think especially for the asking price um, I'd probably wait for like a half off sale or better before picking up this game or this uh, DLC it's just not got a lot of value in it and the heists are short the gun is definitely the um, standout from this pack it's very good the gun is very good um, but the heists are just kind of you know whatever the masks are kind of whatever as well the melee weapon it's a fucking melee weapon it's also whatever you guys know how this is um, yeah I would say wait it out unless you just have money laying around or you review stuff on YouTube like I do, in which case you have to get it. So that is what I think of the John Wick heist pack. Wait on a sale for this one. Let me know what you guys think of the two new heists, Brooklyn 1010 and the Yacht Heist. If you guys have not seen it yet, then I will have like a little outro thing at the end of this where you guys can click on that to go check out those two videos on my channel. And please remember to like, subscribe, and share if you like anything that you saw here today. And remember to always have a good time game.